The research by Loslin Institute at the University of Edinburgh in the United Kingdom, Mackay University, and the National Animal Genetics Resource Center aims at enhancing aquaculture production in Uganda through selective breeding. When you are doing selective breeding, you use a number of modern tools, including genomics, which is mainly using DNA of individual fish to identify the best fish that you can use for breeding for the next generation. If you do this for multiple generations, you improve the productivity of your population or of your seed in terms of growth, disease resistance, and also um, resistance to, this, to the different uh, stre environmental stressors, including climate change. The research project at Matuga Fish Farm is focusing on the nilotherapia. What we are doing today is collecting uh, tissue for DNA extraction that is going to be done in the US and then we will be returned genetic profiles for the different fish individuals that we have sampled today. Then we shall run <coughs> some statistical models to estimate the genetic merit or how good an individual is to be used as a breeding candidate. So after we have estimated the genetic merit of individuals, we will rank them from the best to the worst and we will take the best individuals as parents for the next generation. That is what, that, briefly that is what we call selective breeding. So among the traits of interest we are working on here is growth rate. So fish have been evaluated for over four months and we have been weighing them to calculate the growth rate of each individual fish. So we'll combine the DNA data of each fish and also the phenotype data we have recorded on each fish to identify which of these individuals we have in our hatchery here will be used as breeding candidates for the next generation. So today we have got modern tools in genomics that could enhance the selection process and those are called genetic markers. Genetic markers, those are genetic differences between individuals. Even in humans we have the same DNA but we differ at certain points which we call genetic markers or genetic variants. So we are using a few genetic markers within the genome of Nile tilapia which is the species that we are working on today. And then we are going to profile those individuals for about 1 million or 2 million genomic positions or genomic variants. And with those markers, we will run a statistical model. And the statistical model will estimate how good each individual is based on his or her DNA. Then after that, all the individuals are evaluated. We, we then select the best individuals for breeding. Now, when, I was to, uh, when I'm talking about the modern tools in genomics, we have DNA as a tool. Mainly people know DNA as something to predict paternity and uh, those kind of relationships in humans, that is where it is mostly known. But however, in livestock, we take the same kind of principles, but we utilize them to estimate individuals, to estimate how good individuals for a given phenotype. And then, with that, together with the statistics, and then uh, also together with the uh, kind of a mat mating designs, which will come later when you have identified the best individuals, we can enhance our population from low growth rate to a higher growth rate. So that is uh, uh, briefly what
Under this project, the fish have been evaluated over a four month period in selected ponds where they are regularly weighed to monitor the growth rates and resilience. By understanding the genetics of the Nilotlapia, the project aims at providing fish farmers with high quality seeds that promises better growth rates and reduced losses. And with those markers, we will run a statistical model. And the statistical model will estimate how good each individual is based on his or her DNA. Then after that, all the individuals are evaluated. We, we then select the best individuals for breeding. Now, when, I was to, uh, when I'm talking about the modern tools in genomics, we have DNA as a tool. Mainly people know DNA as something to predict paternity and uh, those kind of relationships in humans. That is where it is mostly known. Uh, we come up with this uh, good quality seed. The production cycle will be reduced five, six months. So that means the farmer will be able to produce twice in a year, which is right now not happening. So that will bring, will be, will, will, will enable the farmers to make uh, profits, maximize their investment, and contribute to income and nutritional security, but also to the country's uh, economic development and uh, the world, definitely. And we all know that the, fish, the demand for fish right now is growing. Our population currently from the most recent uh, 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 census is about 45.9 or something uh, million people. These people need high quality animal protein and the population is not only growing in Uganda but in the whole region. All these people need fish as a source of protein. Now, the natural or the wild resources are not enough to sustain Uganda and the regional demand for fish. That's why aquaculture comes in today. Today aquaculture accounts for almost 20% of the total fish output of the country. So we have vast resources and potential to exploit as a country, but for the benefit of the farmers, the farmers need to have access to high quality genetically improved strains so that they don't waste their hard-earned capital and resources to fish that does not grow or fish that does not utilize the expensive feed to flesh that they can sell and recover their money. Uh, apart from um, uh, after this kind of uh, exercise you're doing, what is the way forward to farmers? So, the process we are doing is a long-term process. You are not going to realize results within a single selection. It takes multiple generations to gain enough genetic improvement that farmers will enjoy. So what we are doing is an initial stage. We are just starting identifying a founder population or a founder generation that we are going to use for subsequent selection of improvement. So it will take a while to the farmers but there is always a first step to everything. We always have to start. And that's why we are doing what we are doing today. It is a start, but in the right direction of improving and enhancing aquaculture production in the country. I'm seeing you picking fish from different uh, lakes, if I may say. Yes. Why are you picking from different lakes? Yes. What is the agenda? Yes. So. Fish from different lakes, fish has evolved or fish has adapted to those different lake environment and each of 
the fish population. We have just published a paper a few months ago or at the start of this year where we demonstrated that indeed fish from the different lakes in the country have got different genetic characteristics and also the genetic diversity is increased when you are developing a, pop, a breeding population and you get strains or populations from multiple sources. So we are trying to enrich the breeding program by using fish from different lakes or different populations. So in order to limit the, uh, the loss of genetic diversity in the subsequent selections, it is very important for us to start with diverse populations, which are the fish from the different lakes around the country. Here we are working mainly with three lakes, which is Lake Choga, Lake Albert, and Lake Victoria strains. Yes. Um, can you talk about the measurement? Why do you measure the fish? I'm seeing you are measuring it, you are, you know? Yes. Putting also the, the tag. Yes. Why that? Okay. So I'll start with the tag. Tagging fish is very important. It is the same way you see tagging cattle, tagging goats, tagging terrestrial livestock animals and pigs, I could say. So, in breeding we must take a phenotypic value or we must take a characteristic value from each individual animal. So, since fish, they look the same, you cannot remember what you measured, uh, the value of uh, an individual without having a number as attached or assigned to that individual. So what we do here, we attach a value, we attach uh, a tag with a number on the fish, and then that number, the fish carries it on through the evaluation time or the evaluation process where we have fish in different harpers and we are evaluating them every two weeks and then that phenotype is all uh, that number is also important when we are collecting DNA material so we have when we return when the data returns to us we can assign the data the, the um, genetic record of each individual to a specific to a, a specific animal. Otherwise, if we do not tag the fish and we just measure and return them to the pond, the data will be useless because it will not be specific. So what we are doing today, we are taking, uh, we are tagging them, we are using a tiba tag and then after that we are taking the records. Now the records are very important. We are taking the length me measurements, then we are taking also the body weight. Now the body weight is very important because this way we are monitoring or we are evaluating the growth rate of the fish. Without taking phenotypic information or measuring the traits that we, we need, we cannot improve because data is very important for you to run a breeding program or for you to run a selective breeding program. That's what we are doing here. So after this program, yes. Uh, I think the aquaculture uh, farming will be no Uganda like the, 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 this kind of farming after your training after your research are we seeing a brighter future farmers would do start now thinking of investing much I think it is very key and that is the backbone of our research our research is farmer-centered. We recently went to different farms across the country and all the farmers who are producing fry, different hatcheries, they are asking for improved, better quality seed. Because aquaculture is kind of a capital intensive business. You don't want farmers to invest their limited resources into fish farming and then they cannot get the benefit. 
So we are very uh, delighted to, uh, to work with Matuga Fish Farm and uh, we believe that our results, they will not only benefit Matuga Fish Farm, but every farmer that comes here to buy fry and to buy seed will benefit from our research and from our work. It is a research that is also uh, commercial based because we are doing it at a hatchery that sells a lot of fry in the region, not only to Uganda, but also to other countries around the region. So our work, where we believe that uh, uh, the good science that we are applying and the new technologies we are applying will produce results that all the farmers will enjoy in the country and we hope to have a significant contribution to uh, advancing the aquaculture industry in Uganda and also in the region. Thank you. Thank you.